Today we get to see a real rarity on the channel, a successful defensive knife use. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's successful knife defense comes to us from Johannesburg, South Africa. Today's video was brought to us by Mantis. The Mantis family of products is integral to ASP staff building handgun and carbine skills and are your most economical and fastest path to improvement in your skills too. Whether you choose the X10, the Laser Academy, the Blackbeard, or use them all in concert, they will help your practice be more effective, efficient, and fun. Go check them out, pick up a unit, and thank them for sponsoring today's video. Attack is already underway when our video starts. See the guy who's facing us has a knife in his hand against three armed attackers against the side of his car. And he is looking both ways, trying to figure out who is doing what and trying to get in his car. Guy jumps at him when he does, but he gets a good slash at the guy. And now he's gonna change to a long hold on the knife and that's gonna make those guys go, nah, I'm not interested in this dude no more. He's gonna chase him off and get in his car. They decide it's not worth it. We're gonna think about lessons. All right, if you carry a defensive knife, which one do you carry? Leave me a comment and let me know what you prefer. I carry a firearm every day. I think it would have been a better tool here as well, but I know a lot of people carry a defensive knife, whether it's a folder or a fixed blade instead. How about you? A couple of things at the beginning here. Number one, I think a knife against three attackers is not a great tool. I mean, it's just a very limited tool worked here, but it wouldn't be my first choice. I think having a firearm would be my preference. Number two, multiple attacker engagements, very difficult, but if you have a force multiplier, especially if they don't, you might be able to get yourself into a place that their force advantage evaporates and they decide that they have better things to do with their day. Number three, the big part here is you notice he's got two on either side of him, one in front of him, but he's done something pretty good here, which is have his back to the car so that that way at least they can't get him from behind. He's not completely encircled. So if you can though, I would strongly prefer to stack them one behind another and maneuver, but he got into a place where he can't. So sometimes you just gotta fight with where you are. Now he has that knife held in a short held grip. And so he's trying to look back and forth and see who's doing what. But notice here, he's looking this way, looking that way, trying to keep these guys off of him. And when he looks away from this guy to his right, as soon as he looks away, that's when the guy is going to come in and get after him. I do love here though, that our defender is trying to get to a barrier. He's trying to get away from danger and to safety by getting inside his car. However, I think he's gonna have a hard time with that because to get in and get the door locked, it's gonna take him more time than he reasonably can expect to have. And so he's not gonna get there here. So as soon as he turns away, that's when the dude runs after him. This is why in these kinds of attacks, you wanna keep, if you possibly can, from having one guy on either side of you because eventually the guy's gonna go, hey, when he turns his head the other way, I'm gonna close this distance. Now, the, the pre prevention of that best one is to keep the guys on one side of you so that you can barricade them, you can blockade them. If you cannot do that here, I think when you go towards one person, when you look at them, go towards them to give you a little bit more space. Now, I think it's interesting here, and this is one of the limitations of the short hold when you're trying to use a knife defensively because that, that slash didn't really do anything because of the design of the knife. So if you are trying to, to stick it deeply in somebody because they are very close to you, then that short hold can be very effective, but it really limits your range. Generally speaking, as a defensive tool, we use a long held knife if we are trying to use it to keep people off of us for exactly this reason, that it doesn't look like it did him any serious damage here and didn't really deter him all that much either. And that's why when our guy changes the knife to his long held, and that long held means that the blade is coming from his thumb side versus the short held where the blade is coming from his pinky side, that's when all of a sudden his range extends and now he has more range than any of the bad guys do with their fists. So their force advantage has evaporated. I'm not saying a short hold is bad all the time. I'm just saying from this perspective, we can see that that long hold on there really changed their minds. Oh man, if that guy comes at me again or I come at him, I'm gonna end up stabbed pretty good. And that's when they decide, nope, it's not worth it. And uh, this, you know, uh, sheep has too many, too much teeth and I'm not gonna mess with him. Good job on that part. Last thing here I'd say is that attitude trumps everything. This guy had attitude for days and he would not be a victim and whatever. I don't think he's got crazy knife fighting skills or whatever. He had enough skills, enough plan, incredible attitude to cover his asp. 